Alright folks, welcome to our new cafe. Wow. It's all ours. It's all ours. So we got the keys to the shop literally 10 minutes ago. Lots of work to be done, but all very exciting stuff. It is a bit of a hectic day because we also have our first outdoor pop-up for Du Matcha Bar. The weather is absolute shit, so no idea how it's gonna go. Yeah, this is our new mm. collection that we just launched-ish. Yeah. Oh, it's... we changed... What do we think of these little hoopy boys? Also, whoa. Wow, two chains. But yeah, absolutely hectic morning because we got the keys to the cafe, then we had to head out, set up the outdoor pop-up, go back to the cafe, tidy up, and now we got some A&W. I'm aware that in the Americas, um, A&W is not a thing, but in Canada, it is supreme. There's what it looks like. It's just like a good old burger, you know? Like, you don't feel like absolute shit after eating it. It just tastes like a, a backyard barbecue burger. Mm-hmm. What a day. Mm -hmm. I can't believe we finally got the keys. Wow. <sighs> mm -hmm. All right, folks, let's make some coffee because yesterday, yesterday was a day. Yesterday was indeed a day. <laughs> Aside from being like physically demanding, just from running back and forth literally everywhere, um, I think more so mentally, like the exhaustion of looking so hard to find the space finding a space it falling through finding a space it falling through finding a space it falling through and then finally getting a space signing and getting the keys i think that um that like excitement and the almost like the adrenaline of that we were just going off of it it's just wild like how fast things change i don't think it's like fully sunken in yet but it is just so cool like last night ryan and i were in this space and just being in the space together um it was just such a surreal experience but it was also like a scary kind of looming feeling because now now it really begins right but yeah let me just give you a rundown of the past what five months where do we begin uh we initially started doing like coffee pop-ups for our friends in our apartment in this very apartment um where our friends could like gather and just meet in the mornings i believe this was about a year after ryan left like the cooking and culinary world and wanted to switch into coffee it was more of like a little preview of what it could be like um, if we did have our own shop. I used to work in specialty coffee when I was back in university in between doing like lifeguarding, personal training, doing YouTube. I always thought about it'd be cool to have my own cafe, um, but it was never like a realistic um, dream because, oh, I have like too many other things going on. Um, coffee shops, cafes are notoriously like low margin and they're very expensive to start up. Little did I know how expensive it would be to start up. But anyways, we'll get to that. You know, it was always like a thought in my head. And when Ryan switched into coffee, you know, we had the talk, we're like, hey, we could possibly do it. You know, so we started at the at-home coffee pop-ups. And then at this time, our friend was already like in the works of opening her wine bar. Like she was doing her full-on build out. Um, so we talked to her about possibly doing a coffee shop in the morning and wine bar in the evening. And we would essentially just be leasing or renting the space out from her in the mornings. So initially the plan was to operate us cow dog full-time in the morning. But I don't know if you can tell by the videos of where we're currently doing our coffee pop-up it is a very very small space especially the prep space we're literally butt to butt like you have to shimmy past people so we quickly realized that it was way too tight of a space for us to be in service in the mornings but then for their cooks and chefs to be prepping uh, because obviously they need to prep in the morning for their evening service that we didn't really consider that it would be that tight of a space. Plus, my friend's wine bar, Deer Gus Snack Bar, if you're in Vancouver, is wildly busy. Like, it is so 
so successful, which is really, really exciting. Also, our coffee pop-up ended up being quite successful as well. Um, and I think that like added volume and that added pressure, it would have been just way too much for us to operate full-time at the same time, which is why our current pop-up is only Sunday, Mondays. So, you know, we made it work. Obviously, it wasn't ideal, but you know, obviously it's her <laughs> wine bar, right? We don't wanna overstep. We started exploring a bunch of different options of where we could host like a full-time cafe in the mornings. We found that a lot of restaurants, existing restaurants just don't have additional capacity for another entity to be in there other than breweries, like where they distill alcohol, etc. The big issue that we ran into, I know this is a lot of yapping, I'm sorry, but I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in a while. Um, distilleries, breweries, their development permit or permit use is for manufacturing primary. So the auxiliary use has to be secondary to the primary use, which is manufacturing. So for us to go in there, it, they just said it wouldn't work because it doesn't fit the existing development permit. So we would have to put in a new development permit, which would be over $8,000, could take over two years and wouldn't even guarantee us getting it. Which is wild because what small business can afford that? Oh, also before this, we put out a call to get like investors and we were you know, willing to give up a bunch of equity to do our own build out. We actually had an investor, like we had multiple investors very, very interested, which we're very grateful for. We went through with one of them. They ended up backing out, which honestly, looking back, it's probably a good thing we did and not give up like 33% of equity. The brewery, the distilleries did not end up working out. Dealing with the city was a headache. And then we were looking at like tiny, tiny shell spaces. And we just like quickly found out that everything would be too expensive. Everything from like putting in the plumbing, the coring, the scanning to, to have a hand wash sink. Like it's little things like that where it just really eats up at your budget. Like it would have been minimum 100 grand, if not two, 300. So we were kind of running out of options because A, we didn't have money so we couldn't just like do our own build out the zoning rules and permitting restrictions don't really allow us to work in the same space of you know spaces that i actually have space which is wild the third option was buying businesses that were going under but obviously we didn't have like a lump sum of money so we were negotiating with a bunch of places to essentially do installment payments so that obviously we would pay rent but also an additional lump sum for the assets of the businesses which is what we landed up doing here. So I know people are gonna be wondering, Joe, like how did you get money to buy this business? Um, we didn't. Uh, we essentially put it on <laughs> buy now, pay later. <laughs> we initially found a different space, but the sellers backed out last minute. And then we found this space and we were just kind of like holding our breaths for a month, you know, for everything to go through. And then yesterday was when we got the keys. So <laughs> I could cry. But yeah, we made it, folks. We did it. <laughs> Hi, Jasper. How was your walk? Come on the couch. Come up. Oh, shy boy, shy boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, how does it feel to be a cafe owner? Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> oh my God. This is like we've been waiting for this for years. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Like, this is kind of what I went to like culinary school for. Kinda. <laughs> like. Yeah. Wow. 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 Here's everything we did so far. Install these vintage teak shelves. We use this as like a little drink stand. It's gonna be our little retail shop. Stunning plant that we picked up a couple weeks ago. Whole little wall partition that's been with me through like four or five different spaces. The kitchen, of course. Look at these vintage chrome vases. first higher 
Rocks class. Essentially, it's like CrossFit in terms of like intensity level without the gymnastics or the Olympic weightlifting movements. Um, it's a lot of running, which I hate running, but I won't, I'm trying to get a bit more into it just because it is like a lifelong skill. Um, it also requires very little equipment, which is nice, and you can do it anywhere. So I feel like I just do want to get into it. I still hate it. Um, I'm hating it less though, which is important. But yeah, doing different movements and then going back on that running and trying to maintain that running speed and running form, it's just pr pretty tough. <laughs> but it was good. It was really good. Yeah, can I head back to the cafe? Um, see what Ryan's up to. And then prep for tomorrow's pop-up. Hello. Uh, wow. This is all ours. Wow. 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 Sounds good. Do you want regular dairy or oat milk? Regular. Strawberry. Oh, no. Don't be sold out. Thanks so much. It's a uh, Mac Popper Joe. Guardo na 